Stephanie Chira. She is the Vice President and General Manager of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. She sits down to chat with us and we'll find out what's coming up in the RHEL 8 release. Stephanie, thanks so much for taking the time to sit down and talk with us. It's an exciting time for Red Hat. Obviously, 26 years uh, in the making, Red Hat has become probably the most prolific name in Linux. Um, as Red Hat approaches that first uh, quarter of a century, and you have some examples of open source, what is next for Red Hat? I mean, to me, it's, um, you know, I, what we have done so far in the industry about helping people take advantage of open source in the enterprise, we take huge pride in that. The innovation being done in open source is just beginning. You know, for us at Summit and, and for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, the thing that's been amazing is this is our chance to reinvigorate with customers and the market that as the IT world continues to change, there is one thing that needs to stay the same so that what you did yesterday and what you do tomorrow Right, have some continuity, and that's Linux, right? And so for me, it's all about getting out to the market that the platform matters, Linux matters, it's what runs your business today, it's what will help you consume the innovation tomorrow, and now you start to build on that, right? With the Linux portion, being able to deploy it via Kubernetes with an orchestrated container environment, given that flexibility, right? So. To me, it's not really a change. Our strategy won't change. It is about continuing to deliver innovation done the open source way, provide choice today, and preserve customers' ability to choose tomorrow. Because everything continues to change. Do you see Red Hat moving to a point where, obviously you'll do both to an extent, but do you see Red Hat moving towards a direction where you look to introduce more uh, new products and services, or continue to refine the existing products and services that you have. Like I say, to a certain degree, you'll obviously need to do both. Um, but where do you see the focus of that in the future of Red Hat? You know, I think our commitment to the platform and the, our commitment to Linux won't change. I think how customers want to augment the use of that Linux and how they take value from that is um, we will keep pace with the market in that, right? We take so much innovation from open source. It gives us headlights to what's coming down the pipe. Kubernetes and OpenShift is a prime example of that, mm -hmm. right? It took Linux and now it's a new way to consume it. So I think our commitment to Linux and the platform, that won't change. We'll continue to work with our partners and our customers and the upstream communities to make sure how customers want to use that and leverage that and then pull in the rest of the portfolio as well. We'll continue to follow that, but uh, we are a Linux and a platform and an open source company, right? And we'll do everything we can to help people take advantage of that. Here at Summit, as well as basically any Linux conference in the past couple of years, past five years even, um, you've seen a rise of talk about containers, Kubernetes, OpenShift, and those kind of related technologies. How do you see that evolving over time? So Kubernetes and containers are a great technology because they give customers so much flexibility about how to deploy applications. The key thing about it is, though, is it's a, actually a more complicated way to deploy your Linux because now your Linux is split. It's split part of it in the container, you've got your kernel, and you've got Kubernetes. So I think the use of containers gives customers great flexibility with how they deploy applications with the speed and agility that they need. But if you want one friend, as you move into the Kubernetes world, you want someone who knows Linux. Absolutely. <laughs> That's why our focus in how we preserve your experience that you know with RHEL, and we continue to provide that same Linux experience via OpenShift, right? As it is a more complicated deployment model for Linux, that is core to us. I think um, the application space and the growth of containers and the use of containers and then the work of microservices, that application space will continue to just expand, expand right? And not only are you a steward of that community, but you guys are an active participant and essentially leading the way in a lot of ways um, of the future development of those platforms. Absolutely. There was an interesting decision in RHEL 8, and it was to not ship Docker, and instead you're shipping uh, Builda, uh, Scopio, and Podman. Can you talk about the decision, uh, what led to that decision, and how that will play out? 
I think we're continuously watching the upstream communities for the use of what tools will be viable going forward. I think as is standard and, and build a Podman and Scopio, we believe provide benefits to customers as the base tools to be put into the operating system. I think another key thing in addition to that decision though is the OCI standard, right, for the use of, of containers, Docker containers, if they are OCI compliant, right, as is with the open source world, we want to provide choice. The OCI, the open container um, interface, right, that OCI standard, that sets up a way for, you know, Docker containers that are OCI compliant to be used with OpenShift and with those tools. So for us, it's all about monitoring the communities, looking at the tools that we see have both innovative capabilities as well as are being picked up by the upstream and to make sure that they're standards so that none of those interfaces right cause a blockage they continue to drive choice or have you seen any um, any problems in convincing businesses or working with businesses have there been any reservations of moving to a virtual infrastructure from mm. a physical one yeah so I think um, I think one of the things that we're very focused on, is, as I mentioned, is really about choice, right? I mean, it's, it's fundamental to what we do. Our goal is to provide Linux any way a customer wants to, wants to consume it. And we have lots of customers who consume it bare metal. We have lots of customers who consume it virtualized, and now clearly we support containerization. So our goal is always not to push customers in order to uh, consume it a certain way. Our, our goal is always to preserve their ability to choose how they want to do it. So we see customers at all different ends of that spectrum. Um, it's not, honestly, we certainly, We'll work with customers to make sure that they're running their Linux um, data center as efficiently as possible. Sure. That's part of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of why we included insights into every subscription so we could further augment that. But um, you know, it's not about uh, it's not about convincing customers. It's about providing them what they need to leverage Linux in the best way possible. That makes perfect sense. One of the interesting things that we've seen with Relate and it came, uh, I guess, earlier in Fedora, is the invention or the distribution of app streams. Can you talk about what app streams are and how they're beneficial to businesses? Yeah, so, um, you know, fundamentally, I look at the feature and capabilities in RHEL 8 that fit into two buckets. One bucket is to make sure that we help customers run their environment, you know, as effectively, as efficiently as possible, help with productivity um, and, and security, right? Then the other aspect is, how do we help them consume innovation faster and keep up with all, everything that's happening in the open source area? So AppStreams, I think, is a huge step forward for how customers can be able to um, consume their Linux and they have a, a base OS that is deployed for the kernel that stays steady as the user space and the application space continues to change as you get updates. You want the next version of Java, or you want the past version of Java. AppStreams provides the ability to continuously pull in the versions that you'd like, perhaps even run different versions of, of, of the same package, mm -hmm. and be able to not change your kernel underneath. So that provides a, a great advantage, right, for the agility of consuming innovation. It really does. Talk a little bit about the universal base image and how that structure works to benefit businesses. So as we look at um, what we deliver in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it's clearly, it's never been just about the bits, right? right? Yes. It's always been about the value and the relationship that a customer gets within their subscription with mm -hmm. Red Hat. And part of that certainly is the ecosystem. Part of the team and the engineering team a lot of the work they do is working with hardware vendors, with ISV companies, with next generation hardware folks, right? Like GPU providers and NVIDIA mm -hmm. and so forth. So we do a lot of engineering work with that, um, folks like that. What we, that delivers is a trusted ecosystem. Everything from hardware all the way up to applications that we have tested. We want to make sure that as a customer has that experience with RHEL, we're able to translate at that into the container world of OpenShift. And universal base image is core to that. Because of the way Linux is consumed in a container environment, every container has Linux user space and libraries in it. So it's important for folks to understand when you get a container from an ISV or someone, it has Linux bits in it. They have made a choice for you for, for your Linux. And so we wanted to go and we wanted to provide a, a package set of um, user space that can be used within a container. It can be redistributed. And when it's ready to, you know, it's 
free to use for developers and sure. for ISVs. And when that innovation of that application, that container is ready to go into production, it can be deployed on OpenShift or it can be deployed on RHEL and be fully supported. So it's really a huge step forward for the ecosystem in order to be able to you know, create and develop and then be ready to deploy in production on OpenShift or RHEL and have that full support environment. Back in the 90s, there was this notion that the operating system was a solved issue, right? And that there was no need to innovate, and so it was really solved. <laughs> and obviously, Red Hat, I think, has made that, that joke didn't age well, right? Um, <laughs> as a company that has, that has led that development cycle, how do you counter that to people that say that the development process uh, is slowing down or that the, that the innovation of operating systems is slowing down? So I look at RHEL 8 as, and, and part of our mission in the market is to make sure that innovation is alive and well in the Linux operating system and that the value of the operating system, RHEL 8 is our opportunity to redefine what that value is, right? The operating system is not just a single aspect in the stack. We can add more value through our subscription model. I am super excited about RHEL 8 and, and having it be an intelligent OS. And that's a, one of the features of that is the addition of insights into every subscription. We have worked for 15 years to help customers run Linux in their large data centers in a very you know, efficient and secure way. And we've learned a lot, we've gathered a lot of data. Insights as, an, as a service that is now available as part of RHEL subscriptions they can use a rules-based engine and get feedback on and recommendations as far as how their systems can be configured to be more secure, to be more performant, and we can even do workload specifics, things like rules for HANA deployments, rules for SQL Server on RHEL. So there's a huge amount of value yet to be gained because you know, Linux is core. It's just that foundation mm -hmm. of, of everything. So innovation is... Uh, well, it's alive and well. And it's exciting, <laughs> absolutely it is. You, you've mentioned Insights a couple of times. For somebody who maybe isn't familiar with it, what's the 30 second elevator pitch? What is Insights and how does it benefit businesses? So what Insights is is really, it's our way in an as a service offering to provide to customers recommendations of everything we have learned over the years in working with customers to give them suggestions and alerts on things they could be doing better for their systems and their infrastructure in the data center. And so that's dynamic and specific to each business or each deployment, rather. That's right, and, and one of the beautiful things about it is, you know, we have a set of insights rules today as we get more data and more data and as new use cases come about, that set of rules will continue to expand, will continue to get better. So for a customer who has a subscription today, there will be new value in that subscription next month and the month after and six months from now. So that's part of the why, reason I love Insights so much is it's, it's really a, a, vi a vision of the relationship that we want with a customer. That relationship continues to grow and get nurtured and get better. And, as time goes on. Yeah, we'll see it. AI is a very disruptive technology, and we are watching that uh, the innovation happen very quickly. What is Red Hat doing to position itself to help businesses achieve their goals as it relates to AI? So I think a couple of things with AI, right? It, it is clearly a workload that has taken the market by storm. One of the great things about AI is that it is, one, it's enabled by Linux, mm -hmm. right? It is one of those core innovation technologies that is being done on Linux. I think another piece about AI that's great is that it, it is being deployed because it is so compute hungry. It is being deployed with requirements on hardware and new capabilities like acceleration and GPUs in the hardware. And then it has all the framework capabilities and it's all built around data. So as you look at AI as a, as a um, workload, it is quite complex in all the things it touches. So now as I come back to what we do as, as Red Hat, we only work in ecosystems. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. AI to be successful because it is so aggressive as a workload and drives such compute intensity, in order to succeed, you're going to need an ecosystem to deliver it. No one company can deliver you know, AI holistically. So our partnership with folks like NVIDIA is very important. The fact that it's all built upon Linux is very important. Partnerships with some of the folks you saw on stage this morning, right? And all those ISVs doing amazing tooling work, 
right? Um, it's going to be an ecosystem play because it does span the complete stack. Everything from, you know, the silicon gates and the chips that are, are being used all the way out to the applications in the tooling space. So for us, we're going to participate in that ecosystem and we'll take it on the same way we take on everything. There will, you know, we work with our partners, we test it, we make it tried and true and deploy it for the enterprise. One of the things that's so inspiring to me about every Red Hat employee that I speak with is that open source for a Red Hat employee, <laughs> it's not just a tagline, it's not a brochure for it, it is a core no. belief. So what to you personally, what does open source mean? So um, I think everyone has, there are, you know, jobs, there are careers, and there are movements. And I joined Red Hat to be part of the movement, and that movement is open source. Mm -hmm. To me, what open source really represents is it's Innovation done faster because a community of the best innovators in the world participate. And that speed and agility and the partnership and the community, it's what I love about it, right? I mean, all of us want to go to work every day and work with the smartest people we can possibly find. Absolutely. And, and this week, we can do it in communities all over the world, right? So it's just exhilarating. Open source is infant enough that most of us that work in, in this career field started out in some sort of proprietary field and we moved into open source because we had that aha moment. What was it for you? What was it when it finally clicked and you went, this is what I want to do and this is where I see passion and where I see the future of technology? Yeah, I think, um, so I first started working in the Linux space about uh, about seven years ago and I'm a chip person by training, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did silicon technology for many years and then I did chip design for many years. And I think what really inspired it for me is, you know, coming from the chip world, it, it's, um, it's a kind of a long and slow process to create a chip, mm -hmm. right? And everything has to work. And the real value of Linux is that it's very dynamic and being able to not just have one company deliver innovation, but have a whole community come together in, with innovation in Linux and have that touch all the way down to the chip, I mean, it's amazing, right? It, Linux spans the entire infrastructure environment. That's what I love about it. It's just fast paced, it's um, collaborative in a way that it's never been done before, right? I really feel like Linux has taught the world a new way to do development. It has. Stephanie, thanks so much for taking mm -hmm. the time to sit down with us. Congratulations again on the Thank release you. of Raleigh. It's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. We're excited to see where Red Hat will go. So are we. <laughs> nice to talk with you.